Hello everybody, welcome to Infinity Wars. We are about to crack open our Star Trek pre-order phase one packs. It's the 1st of May, they came out, though I thought they were meant to come out five days ago. So I got prematurely excited, but here we are. So I bought a four pack, so I got a play set of every card, but yeah, let's see what we got. Oh, we got loading images, love it. Alright, so let's take a look at what we got in our phase one packs. Unlock successful, loading your cards. So I don't know what any of these cards do apart from the ones that were teased. The first time a target character would enter the battlefield with a character this turn, the opposing character dies and neither takes combat damage. That's a Klingon card for four. I like it. I like it. Alright. When enter combat with a character, both characters report to the... <laughs> <laughs> Go to support zone instead. So it's like a fleeting footman, but it sends both back. That would be cool. I, I've got ideas with that one already. Like, because I've been running that deck with Varor, the Varor, uh Lonely Keep. That's the one. You could combine that with this. I mean, unfortunately, the trick with these is that they have their own factions, like Klingon and. Oh my god, I feel bad. That. Federation, that's the one, it's the Federation. If it's not, I apologize. Unlimited character, Klingon Warrior. You only get one. Well, so I've got... He's a zero, one for zero. So he's a factionless cannon fodder. I'm I'm okay with that. First time a target character would enter, the, would enter combat with a character this turn. The opposing character is sent to the support zone and is exhausted at the beginning of the next turn. There's a lot of stop them attacking cards. While on the battlefield, the cost of artificial characters and artifacts are reduced by one. Okay. Dual target character. Let's go back. I really want to run a Genesis, like, infinity deck with this guy, with Data. Totally going to do that. These characters will continue to do combat until either one of them dies or three fights have taken place. So... It's a fight that goes... It's a fight three times. Jesus Christ. Target character you control on the battlefield is moved to the assault or defense zone. Ooh. And it costs zero... Some of these cards are... They seem overpowered to me. I Obviously, being that they're non-ranked, we can't use them in competitive Infinity Wars, which is good, and it means that they can do ridiculous things like this. But Jesus Christ. Two random cards from your opponent's deck are placed into your hand. <laughs> oh, shit. Shit, son. Diplomatic Exploration. At the end of each turn, Diplomatic Exploration gains 5% completion for each character you control, which you do not own. When Diplomatic Exploration is complete, you end the game. It's a mission card. This is a mission card. Mission cards stay in the support zone until they are complete, at which point they go to the graveyard. All right. This is cool because because of the way that freaking start the Star Trek set works because it's a whole exclusive thing. They can add new card types like this that don't actually affect the main game, and I really like that. So, twenty turns later, you win the game. That's interesting. Twenty turns later, and it costs zero, so you could play it to first turn. At the end of the turn, if Goron was take has taken damage this turn. An 1110 Yan Islef is created in the support zone. Holy shit. So I, you'd need to kill him in one go. Otherwise, stuff would get out of hand. Captain Kern may not enter the support zone once he enters the combat zone. Alright. When Q enters the battlefield, a random effect is applied to all characters in play. <laughs> Pardon me. That could be fun. And this is obviously, the majority of these cards, I mean, there's a few overpowered ones, but most of them seem to just be fun cards. We've seen her in previews. Bird of Prey is untouchable on the support and command zones. Deal 5 damage to target character in the combat zone. Uh, move Bird of Prey to the assault zone. Activate only from the battlefield. Okay, and he's a 12-8 flying. And you can't kill him when he's in the support zone. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. When Riker deals damage to your opponent's fortress, all characters in your assault zone gain plus one, plus one. Worf gains two power until end of turn. And he's both Klingon and Federation. I like that. 
And he's a 14 12 for 5. Jesus. That power creep. Pay 7 exhaust. Target character in a combat zone is shuffled back into its owner's deck. That is a really nicely drawn Picard, actually. The artists in this game, they just get better and better. Instead of dealing damage to the opponent's fortress, the USS Enterprise recruits a character from your opponent's deck. Now, for some reason, I've got the feeling that that's not all the cards. It is all the cards. Hang on, Warrior. Okay. So, obviously, I need more... Wait a second. So, let's... Let's just grab another one so I can, instead of shuffling back. So, obviously, you'd have to fill a deck with... <laughs> zero, one unlimited characters. Which seem to be the only unlimited character apart from the Klingon Warrior. Unless, it's that unlimited? Oh, okay. So, you've got a Federation 2-2 two, two for 2. Who's unlimited. And then you've got a 9-8 for 3 Klingon Warrior. Okay. And then you got the factionless one, which is just ridiculous. Okay. Well, those are all the Infinity Wars cards, I guess. I mean, I've got four packs, so I've got playset, but I... I regret not getting more, because now I need more unlimited characters. Anyway. Very short video. I'll work on some... I'll fiddle around with the cards and work on some decks, and I hope you look forward to watching those videos when, I, when they're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.